Welcome back to Visions. I'm sitting here with, my name is Desmond Crockwell, and I'm sitting here with Uncle Ronald Butterfield, who was speaking of his upbringing and how he was born into this environment. The environment that we, as professionals, call at risk. And because of the at-risk environment, it creates at-risk youth. And Uncle Ronald was an at-risk youth and an at-risk young man who got caught up selling the drugs at an early age and exposed to drugs and alcohol at an early age and looked up to people who sold drugs at an early age. And then he himself became a young man. We all develop, we all go through stages of life. And so we go from being a child where things are impressionable to become a young man and we want to get involved. And it's not just from observing anymore, it comes from getting involved. So, Uncle Ronald, we want to get back to you to ask you about how you got involved in drug use and then how you got out of the drug use. So that stage of life and maturing in your teens and twenties and thirties, you know, it's a stage of life where you have children, you got people looking up to you now, you got responsibilities, you know, you're not the child in school, you're now a young man with responsibilities. And what that looks like for someone who's caught up. So I just wanted to ask you about being involved in this game. This, this game is, is, is a lifestyle, it's, it's a life. To some people, they don't realize that this, this life is real and we live it. And, and we're so die hard about living it. You know, it ran me to a became a man of God that I knew while I was in my mess that I put myself in, that now it's gonna come to be a message, God was there for me. See, you can give glory to God or you can give glory to the devil. That's either way you wanna do it. You see the cup half empty or half full. I give all glory to God. Because I know whatever I did in the stage of my life, God was there to protect me now as a man of God. Being on the streets in Middleton, my guide and protection. Let, let, me, let me say first, in all the mess that I was doing while I was on the streets selling drugs, smoking drugs from the age of 17, I think that starts to make my first coke joint by the age of 17. I was making like hundreds of thousands of dollars at the age of 18. But even what I went through to life, my sisters, uh, they was always there for me to guide me through the right path. Like, my sisters are teachers, my sisters are doctors, are school teachers, are this, are that, they're in government, they're in this. It's not like they weren't there to provide for me. My sister Phyllis prayed for me all my life. All my life she prayed for me. It ran life for them. They were to provide the good things. They was good world models, but it was me. Me. Me took that thing to call curiosity to do this thing and play games and I spirits to play. Jump out of school from childhood. I'm glad I had a good childhood was doing going low quad trees or doing go karts. I'm glad I did up Happy Valley. But then when I graduated from Happy Valley, my house burnt down. My house burnt down. And we was all separated. I lived on the streets until my sister Mickey took us in Davis. I was living on the street. I think it was 11 or 12. I was on the streets living. Living, day by day by day. You know how I got my clothes? I went to stores and stole them. Every other day I went to stores and stole them. I, I used to go down to the water and, and, and get a bath in the salt water. I was 11, 12 years old. But now I know God was protecting me. Again, it's not like the stuff that I was out there doing, I didn't have nobody out there to back me up. It was the choices that I made. I was making that money. I was a game from, I jumped from a boy to a man, and I was playing that game as I was selling drugs, I was smuggling drugs, uh, and, and I, I was making profits off of drugs, and I was partying with drugs. I had all the girls, I had the cars, I had this, I had that, and the devil was just feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, to one day was at a party with all of these beautiful models, and they say, hey man, try this here, man. You're we, smoking uh, a spiff of weed, then, you know, hey, try this here. You know, smoke a spiff of rock. And back in the days, a lot of people were smoking. Rock just came out, because we were in the rock cocaine in the middle of time, it was old marijuana we sold. And then it was part of how cocaine that we were selling. Until that rock cocaine came out, I remember when it came out, when they came to the neighborhood, they cleaned everybody out. And we tried it, and we did it, and I was did it, and that jumped me from one thing to another, and I got up at the age of 17, I think it was 17, I was smoking cocaine. I had answers on me every day. Every night, every day, I work hard, 
selling cocaine to make money. I make money, 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 money. Time night time comes, it's party. Party, 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 party. Drink, drink, drunk, drunk. Party, 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 come. The hardest thing about life and the worst thing, I was at that, I was a, a recover, I was a junkie. Mm -hmm. They gave people vision that you can do drugs and be all right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You can do drugs and, and you'll be cool, nobody knew about it. I covered it up with my clothes. Remember that, that, that pride they tell you about the self esteem? I didn't have none. Remember that stuff? Because I didn't have none. So when I did drugs and when I was on the street with people like that, pushed it up. That pushed it up. I'm telling you, I was Superman. If I didn't go out with whatever I had on, man, I, I won't go out. I, I was terrified. And what kids are doing today and what I did is I had to buy my way into people's lives. I had to do stuff. You gotta do stuff to get into these people. You gotta do stuff to get to her. You gotta do stuff to get to there. Today you gotta do stuff to be with that guy to hang out the block. You gotta be stuff to do that guy down Middletown or that guy up Somerset or that guy down St. George or to hang out or to be in the in click. We ain't good. Today's kids don't go out on the streets and, and hang on and do all this crazy stuff, you know. They do that stuff from him. Yeah. Right in the neighborhood, right in the yard. It's okay, my son, sir. It's okay, my son, he can smoke as long as he smokes in the house. David is a liar. Take that fan from him, keep him in the house, lock him in the house. That's what you're gonna do with your children today because the network out there is so amazing and you're jumping and you gotta realize that this is not a boring life. Doing drugs is not a boring life, it's exciting. And being on the streets, it was like HBO 24-7. I was making my money, I was making my money, I was making my money, I was making my money. You couldn't tell me enough, you couldn't shim enough. I was paying for my own stuff, I was paying for my own deal, I was buying my own cars, I was buying my own cars, I was paying my own rent, I was buying my own girls. I was doing all this stuff at a young age. And we was partying, partying, partying. And you're sacrificing, you're selling your soul, and you don't even, it's so easy to sell your soul, you don't even know. Because once again, and I tell people this, that I learned as a man of God, God's in the blessing business. So it's the devil. God speaks to you, so does the devil. You need to recognize who's speaking to you. Because the devil will feed you, feed you, feed you, feed you, feed you. And you'll be saying, thank you, God, thank you, God. He'll feed you to feed you to when it's got to the point, wham, it's just slamming you. But all of this, before you can get to all of this, right, all of this stuff is in my mind. The world don't evolve around what I think, you know, my world does. So all of this stuff that I'm doing and I'm thinking and all this is in my mind. Before I could trust and believe in God or the devil, is in my mind. The war in Odin you know, the wars of fear is in my mind. I found out in life that your attitude is the destination to your latitude. Wherever your mind is, it's going to take you there. And be careful, because your mind's a tricky thing. Your mind's a tricky thing. And what I, I, I believe, what saves me, and, you know, I cried out and asked God, when I was in the myth or the streets of Middletown, selling drugs, doing this drugs, then in drugs, whatever drugs, 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 party, 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 drugs, drugs, party, party. My role models, they were there for me. My friends, they were there for me. I was having sex with all these girls, making all these kids. Let me just say this, and this, this, this is very hard for me. I'm not saying that I kill people in different ways mm -hmm. than shooting them with a gun. The worst thing that I did in my life is to teach my kids how to be killers. The worst thing I ever did is to teach my son how to be killers. You don't need a gun to kill people. I promise you, you don't need a gun to kill people. And I did it to thousands of people and their families. I destroyed thousands of people and their families. Thousands, 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 thousands. Many nights I cried in church and said, God, please forgive me. But I, I, I learned because the stuff that I went through and the process that I went through, I thank God for me doing that stupid stuff and he was there to protect me. I thanked the devil for leaving me through passes that I weren't supposed to go, but God was there to protect me. And them places that I was and that I done and them street corners that I was fighting for and that I did this and I did that and did that and did that. I'm grateful and thankful today. I'm proud I'm, I'm grateful and thankful because I know it was yesterday. And, and God didn't put me there, nor the devil. I'm not giving no devil no glory. I put myself there. I stuck myself in that pit. But I got a key and I got a relationship with God, with something that you can't see. But the evidence is wrong that God's so beautiful that he took her somebody a little thing like me. All what God's got to do now, that's my belief. Everybody's different. Once again, I'm not here to speak religion, I'm here to speak life. 
I can't get caught up in the thing of religion to believe that the only people that God's going to send me is the uh, Christians or Muslims or Seventh-day Adventists. I'm not disrespecting nobody or being a Jehovah. I, 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 can't, I can't believe in that. God opened up my heart because when I was on the street, any and every caller came to me, every religion, church people, non-church people came to buy drugs for me. The devil didn't care. I didn't care. I was making money. I, uh, my self-esteem was up. I had my Superman cape on. I was soaring. I was flying. I was selling cocaine. I was smoking cocaine. That was just a life from going from a boy to going on the street, realizing that this is not a game out here. It's a journey that people's going through now today. It's amazing. It's, it, it, it's not scurry. It's life. And they'll defend it to the best way they can. And that's how these kids are getting caught up in something that they don't know what to do. And us as parents, not out there, see a lot of, I found out a lot of people's parents are not their parents, they're their friends. Can't do that today, man. It's, today is not like yesterday. You can't go in the street and sell drugs. You can't do this on the street. You can't do that like yesterday, you know. Today they'll come to kill you. One thing I learned about black people, no disrespect, I can say it because I'm black and I'm done this year. One thing about me, I found out being a black man, what's yours, mine, so don't come take it from me. And I pray you stop to come help me. That's what I thought yesterday. With that mind frame, whoa. I was a juggler on the street. I was doing all this, I, I, I was die hard. So that means, because I'm, kind of, I'm kind of slow on this one. So if I done that stuff for the devil yesterday, that, that means what? So now I'm a man of God, I can do just the same thing and fight harder. I remember waking up high on heroin every morning. Today I wake up high on Jesus Christ. What more better than that? What more come back to help people? That's, that was, that's awesome. That's like testimony time, you know? Um, if you can hear the passion in Ronald's voice, in the way he speaks, in what he speaks about, and his passion for God, and his acceptance for what he's done, and even his consciousness as to how he taught his son, or his sons, his children. I think that he should be commended for his courage to speak up. And I think that this is an honor to be sitting down with Uncle Ronald, because not everyone has the courage to speak up like this. So as we go to commercial, I want everybody to just reflect on what it is that Ronald's speaking about. Why is he doing this? He's not doing this for me. He's not doing this so he can put himself on a paddle stool. He's doing this because somebody needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear this. We're coming right back after this commercial. Don't move. Call somebody. Let them know what time it is. Let them know that we have someone that is passionate about helping our young people. And we will be right here when you get back from the commercial. Don't move. <laughs> 